Hi everyone. Let's talk about how we can use Image Trace to take scanned artwork or hand-drawn artwork and convert it into vector art. It's a pretty straightforward and simple process and it uses something called Image Trace. So let's imagine that this little rugby dude is a picture that we drew and it's something that we took a photograph of or we used our scanner to capture and put into the computer. You can kind of see on the little video that uh, this image has little some imperfections. It uh, you know has some little uh, scuff marks or little bits of shading. You can kind of see that it's not 100% solid black, but you can tell that it was drawn uh, as a black and white drawing. And that's the first thing to pay attention to is the more precise and clean your line is the easier it's going to be for Illustrator to capture it and convert it into vector. If you try to do a really detailed sketch or some sort of a really subtle shaded drawing, that's not going to work. Imagine this is kind of a stupid process, a little bit like a copy machine. It's taking that image and it's dumbing it down. It's simplifying it into either black or white. So the more information you give it in solid black and clean white areas, the easier it's going to be for Illustrator to do it. So what we're going to do is select our object, there it is, select that image, and then under the properties dialog box, over in the corner, there's now, this is the newer version of Illustrator, so in the properties dialog box you have a little option called image trace, and you can select that and it gives you a few options. Maybe what I'll do is pull that over here just so it's a little more obvious in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to select image trace. Um, image trace is also found under the object menu and there's some other locations for it. So if you're looking for it, that's where you'll find it. Now there are some default settings here that we want to be aware of. Um, high fidelity, low fidelity, different types of color settings. For this situation, we want black and white logo. That's going to give us the best result. So we select it and you'll see that what it does is it basically converts that image immediately into a black and white vector. Now looking at it, it's not quite perfect. It's kind of smoothed some places out, left some gaps in other areas, so we do need to fine tune it. On your properties dialog box, you should also now see a little tab next to the black and white setting. If you click on that little panel tab, it'll pull up additional settings. I'm going to close some of these other palettes that are out of our way. All right, so inside that setting, there's a threshold. Now this is useful for dialing up the detail or dialing it back down. You can see how it improves, maybe even makes worse the trace. You have to kind of adjust it to taste. Slide it around until you get it to look like what you want. Some things that I'm paying attention to as I do it, I'm looking for connections. I want to make sure that the areas of the artwork are filled in and connected similar to my original drawing. Um, I also want to make sure that some of my detail isn't smeared out or blurred out. I want to keep as much detail. So you kind of have to get right in the sweet spot to pick it the way you want it. Just remember it's never going to be 100 percent exactly like your drawing. It has an auto smooth to it and it's going to refine it a little bit. So if you're really OCD about that you just got to put it into your original drawing as best you can. All right, so once that's done, I can close that little dialog box. Pretty satisfied with what's happened here. So to complete the transition, I hit expand. Blop. Now it is vector art. Um, let me show you what this looks like on a gray background. I'm going to slide that over. So you see what it did was it actually traced the entire object including the blank white background. So it takes whatever your image scan is and it makes everything black or white. So to remove some of those extraneous pieces, um, we can do that simply by using the direct selection arrow. So what I'm going to do is deselect temporarily and then now click what is a white background shape and then press delete and that goes away. Now if I zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see that my artwork does have 
a few little problems to it. Um, we're going to be using the paint bucket to fill this with color. So I want to make sure that all of the areas that I could potentially fill with color are separated from one another. For example, if I zoom in here, even though I use the threshold setting on the image trace, there's still a little gap here on his collar. Also, something's happened here between his hand and the rugby ball, and they've kind of joined. There's this white gap here. What does that mean? That means that when I use the paint bucket to add color, it's going to fill in one color for that whole space. So I can save myself a little bit of time here by connecting or closing some of these areas with a line. So it does not have to be fancy. I can use the line segment tool or I can use the pen tool, whatever I want to do. And what I'm going to try to do here is just draw a little shape. I need to fill that with black. Just draw a new shape, a new little line. I'm not connecting it to anything. I'm just overlapping it so that visually it is going to create some sort of separation between those two areas. Again, I'm not trying to connect an object shape or anything like that. I'm just filling in the gap with a little spacer. And I specifically created a shape. I didn't try to do a stroke line or something like that. It's more important at this stage, especially for coloring, to create shapes. All right, so I think I covered all the places that might create potential issues for me. Um, yeah. So now I'm ready to use the paint bucket to do some color. So I'm going to select this guy. And then I'm going to look for the live paint bucket, which is in my toolbar underneath the shape builder, if you don't see it. And I simply start picking some colors to uh, fill in my guy. And I look for those strategic areas where I need to add specific colors. And you see with the paint bucket, it highlights in red those areas that need color. And I can just quickly start dropping in. Oops, I picked the wrong one. Those little gap areas. And you see that after making that little extra line, it now recognized that as an area that I could color. Okay, good. Pick up some colors here, drop in a few more. Maybe a darker blue for his shorts. And pretty quickly, I've gone through and added the necessary, I'm going to give him pink hair, why not? There we go, just drop it in. Oh, something I'm doing kind of absentmindedly there is I'm pressing the Alt key or the Option key on my keyboard and that gives me a eyedropper. So I can pick up a color as I go and just a couple more things to finish it off. Maybe I give him some light blue for his shin guards and maybe the dark blue again for his shoes for his awesome Adidas cleats here. Boom. There he is. So in that way I was able to take my artwork and it was hand-drawn art, scan it, image trace it, use that paint bucket to fill it in and add some new colors. Um, so, before I'm finished though, I do need to do a couple final steps to finish it off. Um, when using the paint bucket, you have temporarily altered your artwork into a painting group. And that painting group disables other typical vector shapes and features. And so when you're finished painting, you always gotta remember to go back to the object menu click on that, ah, I don't know why that menu won't come up, there it goes. Um, clip on the object menu, get down to Live Paint, and make sure you select Expand. That basically finishes your uh, paintable artwork and converts it directly into permanent vector, which is what you need for everything else you're going to be doing. So, expand it, 
and now you could tell the uh, corners of the selection box changed from painting to vector and so now you can grab those individual pieces and use them to your heart's delight alrighty so there we go that's how you take your artwork hand drawn if needed and convert it into vector use these powers wisely only for good and not for evil